When working with rectangular shaped workpieces, the rectangular stock option will quickly create the desired shape. To demonstrate from the toolpaths window, I'll select the stock setup. In the machine group properties window, I'll enable the rectangular radio button for the shape. For the part shown here, there are three options which may be used to quickly create the stock model the select corners, the bounding box, and the all entities options. All of these will be explained here. First, to explain the all entities option, I'll select the all entities button. And Mastercam will quickly recognize all of the entities and populate the appropriate stock sizes, as you can see here. To see the stock in the graphics area, I'm going to enable the option display to stock Select the radio button to display the stock as a solid, and I'll accept these selections with the green check mark. I can now see the stock model is a translucent red. If I go to the stock display options, I can turn the display of the stock on and off. I can also display the stock as a solid or wireframe entity. Currently the stock model is a bounding box that contains all entities. If the raw material is to be a bit larger than the parts overall size, then I can add material to each end of the stock as required. For this example, I'll add a sixteenth of an inch to each end on the x-axis and a sixteenth of an inch to the z-axis, but only on the top surface of the part. So from the toolpath window, I'll select the stock setup again. I'll click in the yellow box below the x-axis to add the stock. At the end of the 1.25, I'll click and I'll type plus 0.125, which will add a sixteenth to each end. To see this calculate, I can press enter or click anywhere else in the window. If I accept this selection, I can see the stock is growing on each end by a sixteenth. At this point, I'd like to add a sixteenth of an inch to the top of the part only. In the tool pass window, I'll again select the stock setup. In the Z field, I'll click at the end of 0.625, type plus one sixteenth. I can enter this as a decimal fraction or as the fraction itself. I'll press the enter to calculate and accept this selection. And back in the window, you can see it's added a sixteenth to the bottom of the part only. To correct this, I'll go back to the stock setup. And in the stock origin, in the view coordinates area, in the Z field, I'll click at the end of the zeros and enter plus point zero six two five and press enter on the keyboard. I'll accept this selection and we can now see how the stock has been shifted up to add the sixteenth above the part rather than below. Next we'll look at how to create the stock by selecting corners. In the toolpaths window I'll select the stock setup. I'll come down to the select corners option, select it, and Mastercam will prompt me to select a point or vertex. I'll select the bottom right hand corner of my part. As the second corner I want to choose the intersection of this edge and this edge. However, I cannot. So I'll exit the selection window, cancel the stock setup, select this face, and create a new sketch. For the sketch, I'll convert this line. So I can now select its endpoint. I'll exit the sketch. Back in the master cam ribbon, I'll go to stock setup, select corners, I'll now select these two vertex and accept my selections. Lastly, to use the bounding box option, I'll go back to the tool pass window, select stock setup, and this time I'll click on the bounding box option. When I do, you can see a new bounding box window on the left side of the screen. 
By default, all entities will be selected. I can also on Mastercam create various types of geometry. Here I can expand the raw material and here I can change it to a cylinder. I'll accept this setting and the stock setup and now I've created stock.